Hi, welcome to another Quick Flicks brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment. My name's Norm. Today we're going to finish up uh, a few things on our inlet circuit and then we're going to look at the idle circuit for our performance four barrel holly uh, today. All right, so let's talk about idle circuit today, okay? Um, Holly four barrel, performance four barrel. I've taken the bowl off. Remember we did this the last time. Uh, anyhow, in here, primary metering block uh, with a idle mixture screw on each side. And here's what an idle mixture screw looks like. Uh, I would encourage you to probably leave yours in, okay? I would not take them out just so you can have a look-see. If you want to look at one, look at this one. The threads are very fine so that you can make small incremental adjustments, uh, which is very important when tuning the idle circuit, okay? And then if, as you notice, the tip is the needle, okay? And it does seat, um, kind of like a needle and seat thing again, uh, into the uh, needle, the mixture uh, cavity, okay? Now, this cavity is in and adjacent to the main well. The main well is fed, remember we got fuel going on here, right? The fuel comes in through the jets, it goes into the main well. The main well is in the primary metering block, also secondary metering blocks, but comes into this main well. The main well itself feeds most, if not all, the circuits on a Holley Performance 4-barrel. Uh, one way or another, it has an effect on just virtually every circuit. Uh, remember, carburetors are driven by pressure, uh, high pressure, low pressure, the differential, by venturi effect um, and, and gravity. So really there's not, other than the mechanical tuning and, and, and uh, orifice thing going on with carburetors, the rest of it is just good old fashioned flow, airflow, fuel flow, okay? So our main well, our cavity for our needle and seat, uh, your needle and seat uh, circuit has a bleed at the top or at the bottom on some hollies. Uh, to allow air to also come in. This is where the, the air meets the fuel and it allows it to be emulsified, okay? So that's really all the, more, all the theory I'm gonna go into today. But I do wanna point out the fact that the, uh, the idle circuit has its own provision off of the main. Uh, the main well is very important and we're gonna probably talk to, about it in uh, upcoming episodes as we look at more Holly stuff, okay? So, all right, so let's talk about dialing in a idle circuit for a moderate performance, a, a factory rebuild, uh, maybe even some aggressive uh, motors could go through this process and find the response and the, and the tune that they're looking for, okay? So this particular Holly, like most Hollies, has a timed or tuned vacuum port, okay, which is up toward the top. It's on the primary metering block. Uh, it also has a non-timed or non-tuned port which we would call full manifold vacuum or full engine vacuum that is down low, uh, usually associated at or below the throttle plates, uh, and which is the case on this one. This is it right here, okay? So we need to know where that port is because that's gonna dial us in on our tune today for our idle circuit, okay? Uh, okay, so let's say now, uh, here's my nice motor. Uh, it's at operating temperature, very important. It's running at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna back off the curb idle adjustment. So come on over here, motor, into my lap. And uh, let's see here, my idle, uh, curb idle adjustment. Now, um, let's say, oh, that feels like 800 RPM. Oh, there's 750, 700. Oh, it's starting to get a little weird. It's gonna stall if I go any further, so I'm gonna stop, okay? So I'm still idling, but I've backed off my idle, my curb idle adjustment. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and turn the motor off, okay? So kill the engine. Uh, I'm going to take a vacuum gauge, okay? Now we haven't talked about vacuum gauges, so let's do a moment here. Vacuum gauges are the way to tune a four barrel, a two barrel, a one barrel. Any carburetor really can be tuned with vacuum, okay? Or by a vacuum gauge in the reading. Uh, if you need to go and tune today by a tachometer reading, uh, that's okay. If you're gonna do a tack reading, I would encourage you to have a handheld that would read into the tens or ones position. That way you get the most uh, finite adjustment and the best reading as you go through your tune process. 
If you're stuck using attack on the dash, you may see uh, the, the, the type of movement that we're looking for, you may not. So uh, a vacuum gauge is best. Uh, you can get a vacuum gauge for 15, 20 bucks. You can spend a lot more if you want to. Uh, most vacuum gauges are uh, double-sided. And what I mean by that is it's a, a two-in-one tool. One side will do vacuum, the other will do pressure. Fuel pressure, hey, what a concept. We're dealing with a lot of fuel stuff. You might want one of these, okay? Anyhow, my vacuum gauge. Uh, I've backed off my curb idle. Uh, my motor is at operating temperature, but it is not running. And I'm going to take my vacuum hose and hook it to the full-time manifold vacuum, full engine vacuum port. And from there, I'm going to quickly go uh, to my idle mixture screws. Now, this is a uh, primary metering block only, so I'm only going to have mixture screws up front, driver's side, passenger side, left or right, on the primary side. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to go ahead and turn them in to lightly seat them. Now remember, we're dealing with the little needle tip and a seat. So you don't want to jam them. You want to go gentle. Okay, right to where they stop. And then you want to back out one and a half turns. And I'm going to keep track here. So one half, one, one and a half. And then we do the same to the other side. Into it lightly seats. As I said, don't jam them hard. You can, you can hurt the needle tip. Okay, so there I go. I'm going to go one half, one, one and a half. Okay, I've got my initial setting of one and a half turns a piece after lightly seating. On a performance four barrel holly, you're going to go counterclockwise to add air and fuel to the mix. On a, on a economy holly, which does exist, you would go the opposite direction. You would go clockwise uh, to add air and fuel mix, okay? But performance four barrels, you open up, you come out counterclockwise. And again, one and a half turns, it's the Holly recommendation. And uh, through years of tuning, it's what I found is the good starting point. And I mean, why mess with something if it works? And uh, from there, our one and a half, I'm gonna go ahead and start up my engine, okay? now. I did back off my curb idle, but it should still run. Okay, so boom, here we go. I'm up and running. I'm already at operating temperature. Uh, and what I'm looking at is my vacuum gauge. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, hey, I'm doing good. Um, I've got, um, let's say, 12 inches of mercury, okay? Uh, that's pretty good for a, a moderate rebuild, a little performance stuff going on, but I'm at 12 inches. I'm pretty pleased with that. So what I want to do at that point is, is, to, is keep one eye on your idle mixture screw and the other eye on your vacuum gauge, okay? So I'm gonna lay it in proximity. What you might do is have a person, a friend, hold that out by your carburetor while you make the adjustment so you can watch, okay? But I'm just gonna go ahead here on our imaginary engine and I'm going to go counterclockwise again and in, in, in very small increments and watch my gauge, okay? So I'm gonna turn gradually. Hey, looky here, I'm up from 12. I'm headed to 12 and a half. I'm headed to 13, 13, 13. Oh, I'm under 13. Okay, so I know at this point I've maxed out this side. Okay, now I'm going to go back just a hair to get back to 13. Okay, I'm going to find that sweet spot. And now I've noticed how much I turned from my one and a half. I'm just shy of two turns out on the passenger side. Okay, so same thing. I'm watching my vacuum gauge. I go to the driver's side. I know I'm at one and a half. I'm going to go counterclockwise and I'm watching as I make the adjustment and I'm headed towards, oh, 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 here we go. I'm at 14 already, 14 and a half. I'm gonna be, this one's picking up more than the other side, which can happen. Uh, 14 and a half, 14, a little over 14 and a half. I'm not gonna make 15. There, so I'm under 14 and a half, so again, I'm going to back off just a little bit, come back to that peak that I had at 14 and a half, actually just a hair over 14 and a half, maybe I'm like 14, six. All right, and that's where I'm going to let that set, okay? Now, at this point, I'm pulling the maximum inches of mercury that I can obtain off of this holly on this particular motor uh, under these conditions. Uh, this setting should stay for you for a long time. Uh, some people would come back and do this process again. I have found that 
it's really not necessary. If you're dialing in 14, 14 plus or, or even a 12 plus range, you're probably doing pretty good depending on your build. So, All right, so our motor's off. Uh, we've dialed in our idle circuit. If, uh, if you find that you have a, a, an extreme build or more aggressive build that does not respond to the idle mixture screws, uh, th there could be a couple things going on. One could be that your power valve is blown out. Uh, chances are very small that that's the case, but it could happen, especially if you have a older Holley Performance 4 barrel, and I mean seven or eight years now they've been, the, or back, uh, the last seven or eight years Holley has been doing power valve protection. So that's probably not what's going on. It could be that your, your idle vacuum is below the rating of your power valve. Okay, so you're already pulling off of the idle circuit into the power enrichment circuit. It could be that your curb idle has to be so big that you're already past the idle circuit also. Uh, we'll talk about those kind of things in a future episode and uh, where we talk about more, uh, more power tuning and extreme type uh, applications uh, regarding the Holley. Uh, I will just say there are a couple things you can do for those type of applications. One is you can uh, flip your carburetor and give a little uh, little distance or a little opening room on the secondary uh, throttle shaft. You can try that to get a little bit more air into the system. Uh, also drilling the primary uh, throttle plates is a possibility, but I don't want to go any farther than just mentioning that today. Uh, but this should cover, most, most people out there should see this as a, a way to tune their idle circuit. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's episode on the idle circuit. Next time we're going to talk about main metering, so we're going to keep this series moving along. Uh, please leave your comments below, and uh, if you would like to subscribe right here, also over here to the side uh, are additional videos. So thanks again. Bye.